Boone is moving through this area on the bequest of the Howard family. The Howards are wealthy landowners that are down east and they own most of the area here. The large mountain that you can see from App State's campus is Howard's Knob and they would hire surveyors to go onto their land to say, I saw this many deer and there are this many water sources and this is a rough map, things of that nature. So that's how Daniel Boone makes his living going into the frontier uh, to support himself. So he came up here uh, with a slave of the Howard family named Burl and they spent some time looking around the area. We know for a fact that he more or less camped near the uh, uh, statue that's on Appalachian State's campus of him. Uh, we know that he scaled some of the peaks in the area, wrote a decent little bit about where the rivers come together. And a lot of the writings, interestingly enough, seem as though they would have been made as if he was standing on this hillside looking that direction. That being said, what was life like at this period of time here? It's kind of, it really is sort of hard to even imagine Sure. When we start to take away all of these things that we're used to today, what it was like here. So what you have are the people that are winding up in the mountains typically don't want to come to the mountains. Daniel Boone is by far the outlier here. You've got runaway indentured servants, you have runaway slaves, you have people that have gotten into trouble, and they all come up to the mountains. This area during the 1700s was known as the Lost Province. There are no roads in or out. So when you don't have roads in or out, you don't have tax collectors. So these people from the 1730s all the way up to the Revolutionary War are living in total freedom. And they're the first people uh, of European descent on the continent to actually experience that. So they have families and they are raised away from the yoke of British tyranny. So they're not Americans though. They don't get swept up in this patriotic fervor during the Revolutionary War. There's something entirely different, this free state of Appalachia, if you will. Mm -hmm. And they pretty much stay throughout the, uh, the most of the Revolutionary War as non-combatants until 1780 when the British threaten this area. How do you describe what Appalachia is? It's definitely its own independent culture. Um, it is made of rugged individualism, uh, rich community life. It has its own culture and folk tales going back. If you're gonna study Appalachia as a whole, you almost have to study it from an anthropological uh, perspective, like you're looking at some foreign tribe or something of, of that nature, just because of how different it is. Certainly it has ties to the United States, but there's also a lot of ties to the old country. So you've got uh, Scottish elements that are in play here and Irish elements that are in play and English elements. And, and actually a lot of the storytelling and stuff has African elements woven into it. So it is, uh, if you could take the Atlantic world and distill it down, a lot of those remnants are still here in Appalachia. Let's talk about the show. Sure. Uh, longest running outdoor- Revolutionary War. Revolutionary War outdoor, War outdoor drama, outdoor drama yeah. in the country. In the country, yes. So we were founded in 1952. Watauga County was having its centennial in 50. Mm -hmm. And we put together of a 400 person pageant that went through <laughs> everything wow. of, of Watauga County's history. And apparently it was like three and a half hours long. So they came up here with an idea of creating a mountain drama uh, in Boone where at the time, you know, the high in the summer is 72 degrees and then it cools off in the evening. So they hired a playwright by the name of Kermit Hunter and he was from the UNC School of uh, Theater. Mm -hmm. And he came up here, stayed while he wrote it and worked with the Southern Appalachian Historical Association. Uh, but the show is really about the regulators and the over mountain men. So you have a family that's torn apart by the American Revolution. Um, a loyalist family son fights for the regulators and because they love their son more than their country, they come to the mountains and Daniel Boone's the one who leads them to freedom up here. But it's more or less a story about what, what does it mean to be an American and how did all of these people arrive at this conclusion? And um, we actually end with the Battle of Kings Mountain. So that's your, your final point of transition from the, the old world where English, where Scottish, where Irish to a free state of Appalachia where an independent people to this, this new concept of, of America. This is summertime, springtime only, right? Yes. What can we expect when we're here? So first thing, shout out to the farmer's market. On, on, a, on a Saturday morning, there is nothing more fun than strolling through our farmer's market. Our museum is actually open to the public for free on Saturday morning. So if you're wanting a place to go get your nice uh, local made bagel or, or coffee and sit, we'd love to talk with you about history. So we have costumed interpreters, uh, staffed, paid professionals in all of the cabins. 
And what we do is we set up a frontier village as it would have been in the 1700s up here. So you're gonna see people fleshing hides and you're gonna see people shooting off their rifles and we're gonna be cooking stews. And we talk about foodways and family and more or less, you're going to get to walk through the kind of community in the museum that they set up in the show. So we are in many ways the historical balance for the work of historical fiction. Then at eight o'clock, the curtain opens on the show and for a two hour runtime, you are blown away by incredible dance numbers, large battles, moving narrations. And the little slogan we use is we want you to live your history because it doesn't matter if your family helped start this country in 76 or you guys are just visiting. Collectively as people, this is all our shared history and heritage. <laughs>